Welcome to Milkshake Monday, the first episode of 2020. I'm Anita Helm. I'm the wife of Reverend William Helm of Resurrection Baptist Church. Welcome. And tonight is episode 75. So there's been 75 opportunities for us to learn and grow together. And tonight you may say the title's a little deep. Anita, what's going on with that? But the title says torment. It's more than just fire. And I'm not just talking about hellfire. I'm talking about torment and agony. And tonight I'm getting close to the end because I want to have an intervention. And some of you that listen are Christians and you're on fire for the Lord. And there are others that just, hey, I'm looking at the cell phone and who's that big face lady? Let me see what she's got to say. I don't care why you're here, why you're listening. But God, through the Holy Spirit, is allowing you to have this intervention. And it's a listening intervention. I know I've been in relationship with people who are addicted to drugs or alcohol or whatever the, the addiction of habit, whether it's gambling or sex or whatever the habit is. But in this case, the addiction that I'm talking about is not listening, not hearing anything that has to do with the truth of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm having an intervention tonight because it's serious. It's I know that for those who are parents or spouses or children or people that you love that have addictions of different things that I've talked about, you think I'm being silly. I'm not being silly. Just like a mom or dad could be terrified, a wife or a husband can be terrified that they're going to find their husband dead on the streets or they're going to get that call one day that something has happened and they're in a hospital or they're laying, being beat up or hurt. The same is true for that loved one who recognizes that they're burying somebody in the ground or cremating somebody being burned, body being burned, that they are going to eternity not knowing God. That is just as terrifying as somebody who's addicted to drugs, alcohol, habit, 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 habit. And tonight, God has impressed upon me to share some scripture to hopefully have those of you who are addicted to not caring about Christ, not wanting to listen about anything regarding his praise, his worship, his lordship, that tonight something would break through. I pray through the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a term when you deal with addictions called enablers. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to enable you tonight to listen and to hear not with these ears, but with the hearing of your heart, your soul. And now I got deep, so I'm going to pull back. I'm going to actually move back from the camera so you don't have to feel so intimidated. But I pray, God, that something's going to be said tonight that's going to help you. And maybe it's not specifically you, but God be blessed if you can share it with your son, your daughter, your friend, your cousin, the stranger, the word of God. Because I tell you, Satan is getting busier and busier because he knows the time is winding down. So let's go into the scriptures. I, have, I could give 20 scriptures. I only put a handful and I hope it'll be conversational in the name. So I want you to go to Luke chapter 16. In, in 16, there's a story that you see it's in red letter. Christ is telling you a story about hell and how there's heaven and there's hell. But I want you to see how I got about the intervention of us not listening and the focus on the tormenting and the agony. And everybody thinks of hell and they think about hellfire. It's hot. We're going to burn up. That's all you think about when you think about hell. But there's so much more that you need to understand that when you don't want to hear about the things and the good news of Jesus Christ, you have to think about more than heat. You have to think about more than heat. So let's start with Chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, the rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment, that's where I got that word, and being in torment in Hades, that's hell, he lifted up his eyes and he saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, 
have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. But here's where we're going to talk. But Abraham said to, said, son, remember that in your lifetime, you received your good things and likewise Lazarus, evil things, but now he's comforted and you're tormented. And besides all this between us, in you, there's a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, and you can't from those who want to be passed to us. Then he said, I beg you, here's where you don't want to be. You want to find yourself in hell and all you've been thinking about in your lifetime, the good stuff that you want to do for yourself, but you don't realize in hell, there's no exit signs. And then I want y'all to see a couple things that you don't realize. And I've taught some of this before, but I want to break it down so you can understand it. He's talking. So he has the ability to talk and to cry. He has the ability to have his memory. He has the ability of sight to see up to see what's going on that that Lazarus guy. So his memory to know who that Lazarus poor man was that was sitting out front of his gate. He understands that he's so hot. Can you imagine, you've been at hot summers, but he's so hot that his tongue is hot. Do you understand that in hell, it's not just the fire, but do you remember how Christ, when he was crucified and he was receiving his glorified body, he was hungry and he ate breakfast with the disciples? That you're going to have hunger because you don't see no restaurants that they talk about in hell. So you're going to have hunger pains for eternity. You're going to be thirsty with a hot tongue for eternity. You're going to have memories. And guess what those memories are going to be? All those times when somebody was trying to tell you about Jesus, was trying to tell you, hey, why don't you come read with me, study with me? Why don't you come and have a relationship and stop following after the things that are temporary, that after you get them, they're not going to satisfy you. So that's just one part of what you see. Now look at what's happening here. Let's go on. Let's keep moving on. We're going to jump to 26. He says, and besides all this, all that Abraham just explained, you had your good life, luxury life, wearing purple, you rich, you got hedge fund money, you got, what do they call that thing when you have um, so much uh, windfall profits? In your life, you had windfall profits, but this guy had nothing, he was sick. But here we go, besides Abraham says, son, Remember that in your lifetime you received good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he's comforted and you're tormented. And besides all this between us, so let's jump to 27. Then he said, hi, this is, a la this is the rich man talking to Abraham. He says, then I said, I beg you, therefore, father, that you would send him to my father's house. Now the guy is in hell. He's being tormented. He's in agony, but he's thinking about his family folks his brothers, and he's getting ready to say something that I want y'all to realize why we're having an intervention of listening. Because when you're in this life, as you go, you think you're having a good time, you're kicking it all as well, you know? Those that actually find themselves in hell want to come back and give a message to the people who are not there yet to say, hey, 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 pay attention, pay attention. But I want you to see what happens in this dialogue. It says, I beg you, therefore, that you send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he, being Lazarus, may testify to them. May be that mouthpiece to say, hey, I'm going to teach y'all something about uh, faith, about Jesus, about the God stuff. Tell, go tell my brothers some of this God stuff that I didn't pay attention to when I was living a good life. I was having the good things. He says, have him go back and talk to my father's house and testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. So here I am in 2020, and I'm trying to share with you that you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to the place of torment, but you ain't got time. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time to listen for that. Shh, shh, I ain't going to even finish the statement. I don't need to listen to that. That's that Jesus stuff. That's that white man religion. That's that stuff that you don't believe. Those people are just warped. They done been brainwashed. Okay, okay. This is what this is what the rich man is saying. Go back and testify so they don't come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, and I want y'all to hear this. 
they have Moses and the prophets, which is the same as saying they have the word of God. They have the testimony of God being proclaimed by the prophets, the preachers, the teachers that you hear every day. People are preaching everywhere. Churches on every corner. Churches on the internet. Churches streaming live. They got it on the radio. They got it on the Facebook, Instagram, everywhere you want to look. Every place in the world, everybody's trying to say, hear the voice of Jesus calling you. And so he throws that back at the rich man who's in hell in this place of torment. And he says, let them hear them. And other translates, let's some listen to them that are out there preaching and proclaiming, telling about the urgency of knowing Christ. The same as we say here on the Facebook or in the churches, we're trying to share the message of Christ. And people are like, I don't want to listen to that. I don't got time for that. So Abraham's saying, listen to them. Let your brothers and your family listen to them. But listen to what this man says because he knows exactly what's happening in 2020 because it's been happening for centuries and millennials. Listen to what this man that's in hell says. Verse 30 says, and he said, no, no, Father Abraham. But if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. You can't just talk about the preacher stuff. You can't talk about Moses and the prophets and talk about the word of God that's being proclaimed to them because they won't listen to that. They won't hear that. But if you send somebody from the dead, they will repent. Here's what happens in verse 31. Abraham's in heaven. Lazarus is there. Christ is using this as an example back then, but it's for us now because we're having the intervention in 2020 to listen because none of us want to pay attention. We don't want to listen to this stuff. It says, verse 31, but he said to him, as he's in hell being tormented in agony, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, that's the word of God, neither will they be persuaded though one rise from the dead. So you want this poor man Lazarus to come back to your brothers who didn't pay attention to him laying in the gate suffering not having his needs met but because he's dead come back to life they're going to pay attention they didn't pay attention to Lazarus the other Lazarus that Jesus said Lazarus come forth they didn't pay attention to that Lazarus who came forth from the dead they didn't come back and repent when Jesus Christ got off the cross crucified from the dead and here we are in 2020 all kinds of signs happening around us and nobody got time for the word church churches church seats church pews nobody got time to get up in the morning they got time you know what they got time for washing the car doing your laundry going to watch your favorite movie going to see some girls going out to the club let's go to a restaurant have brunch on sunday Let's go out and just have a good time shopping because it's got some great sales. Let's go out and do everything we want to do during the Sabbath. We don't have to time to do anything when it comes to God. So I want to tell you some things. That's, that's what I wanted to start you with because the agony and torment is for those that don't want to listen to hear the message of Christ. In 2020, you have to understand that the torment that is for those who reject the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Lord says in Psalms 2 and 12, it says, kiss the Son lest he be angry. Guess who's angry that they're talking about? That's the Father. That's the Father that in John 3, 16 says he loved you so much that he sent his Son, his only begotten Son, to save you. And he says, whosoever believed, he didn't even believe, he said, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But you ain't got time. You don't want to listen because you know better than God. You know how your life is going to be because you're in control of it. But when that last breath is taken from your, your natural body, you have this eternal body that doesn't stop remembering that you had an opportunity to repent that does not have the opportunity to get and eat any more bread, to drink any more water, that doesn't get to see and light anymore because it's all dark in hell. That, you know what? 
Everybody's screaming. Everybody's gnashing their teeth because they're so upset because they're in the torment and agony that they did to themselves. And they will remember all the times that they have the opportunity in this natural life to hear about Jesus, to understand what it means for this choice that you have to make. You either accept the Father's Son or you reject Him. And if you reject Him, it's your own free will. But it's your will that allows you to be like this rich man in hell, to be tormented in agony, separated forever and ever from the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For you to see and recognize that family folks that were talking to you about that Jesus stuff, they ain't there. But you know who's there? All those people that said, oh, that Christianity stuff is just stupid. That stuff's not true. Oh, no, follow after me. Follow after what I'm doing. Do this, do that. Oh, you don't have to listen to them. God hates this sin. Oh, we can love it. We can do everything we want to do because we, we are in control of our own lives. We're doing what is right in our own lives. All of those are lies from the devil. Because guess what? The devil knows torment's coming. And you don't believe me? Let's go to Luke 8. Let's go to Luke 8, 28. I didn't put that in the list, but I want y'all to see something. The devil and the demons know about the torment coming. It's the folks in the flesh that think this is a joke that hell is a joke, that torment and agony that comes when you don't know Christ is a joke. They want to say, oh, coexist. We all coexist here, but we ain't coexisting in hell. Those that are, are his are going to be with him. Why would Christ bring people that don't believe in this time of John 3, 16, grace and mercy? But look what it says in Luke chapter 8, and we're going to start at verse 28. It says here, when he, this is the demon, when he saw Jesus, he cried out. First he cried out. He fell down because that's all you can do in front of Jesus is fall down at his feet as you're a demon because he is the son of God. He fell down before him and with a loud voice, he said, what have I to do with you? Jesus, son of the most high God, I beg you. Do you see some similarities? The rich man cried out to Abraham and the rich man was begging. Now you have this demon crying out, recognizing that Jesus is the son of the most high God. The demons understand it. But we as Christian people and the people that are pretending that they don't need Christ, we take him for granted all the time. But the demon says, you, Jesus, son of the most high my God, I beg you, do not torment me. Others in Mark 5 and 7 will say, do not torment me before the time. Have you come to torment me before the time? They know what's coming. It's us that think it's a joke, that think we got plenty of time. Reverend Helm, I was telling him, I saw on the Facebook, that in Decatur, Illinois, his hometown, that somebody put 21 pictures of young people Black boys and girls that have been murdered, killed, dead. All those kids that don't have no clue about the word of God. Grandmama tried to take them to church and worship. Mama tried to tell them how important it was. Granddaddy, grandmamas, auntie. But no, they wanted to do their own thing. And yeah, maybe some of those, maybe most of those 21s were innocent. In the wrong place at the wrong time. Lord have mercy on their families and their comfort. But the reality is evil is about all of us and they're killing children, adults, senior citizens. You don't have to be in a special place. You can be in a church house. You can be in a grocery store. You can be in a movie theater. You can be at a funeral. You could be anywhere. Satan is getting seriously because he knows the time is winding up. But I want to see and show you three scriptures Three quick scriptures before we end, because I want to share with you there's hope. I don't just say something to make you scared and afraid. You know what, what had used to happen when I was uh, young in the early 70s? I was born in the 60s, but in the early 70s when I was of the age to understand stuff, I used to hear the preachers always talk about hell and fire, hell, fire, brimstone, and scare the hell out of you to try to get you to just say. And then we went this other pendulum 
And we just love, you know, Jesus love. That's true. Jesus love. Lionel Richie song, Jesus love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ is love. In his lordship, he will correct and discipline those he loves. So it's not always going to be sugar. It's not going to be the enabler for you to do whatever the hell you want to do. And then think about Christ when you get in the jam and you're in the prison and you're in a hospital bed. And then you think about Christ. But then when you get on your feet, forget him. And the, and the donkey rode in. Forget that. I'm, I'm better now. I can do what I want. You have to understand that the time is drawing nigh. And we have to be serious about the things of God. So I want you to go to John. Because John 3, and most of us know John 3, 16, but I always want us to see 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, because we forget the importance of, he didn't come to condemn you, but he wants you to recognize that there is a, there's a, there's sin that all of us are sinners and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God and that he came because of the love. The father loved us. He loved you, he loved me, and if it was just you, he would have come because he doesn't want any of us to perish and be tormented for what the lake of fire and the hell and Hades that he prepared for Satan and his demons. He's enlarging for all these people to say, I don't want to listen, I don't want to listen, I don't want to listen. You can't tell me nothing. But verse 20, uh, 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. You remember the demon? He said, Jesus, you're the most, the son of the most high God. Have you come to, to torment us before the time? He was intending to torment the demons. He didn't want to torment us, but because us don't want to listen, he's going to be tormenting a lot of people. But he says he didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It says, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen and that they have been done in God. Darkness is in hell. Darkness is a part of the torment and the agony that you can't see where you are. You can't see clearly. It doesn't it bug you when you're in a room and it's so dark you want to look down and read something and see something and you can't see it. You can't get the focus right. Well, in darkness, there is no focus. There's just agony and suffering and knowing that you, you did this and you can't take it back. You can't take it back once you're in hell. You don't get a free pass. You don't get a get out of jail free card. You don't have this thing that they had in the cartoons where they're having a bonfire. There's no bonfire. It's the lake of fire. Everything's fire. If you think having a, a fever of 101, 102, 104 is hot, what do you think a lake of fire is? This is not a game. Satan wants you to get so lulled and, oh, this is such a great life. We've got the internet and we've got our TVs and our cars and our houses and we got our food and our buffets and life is good and we have our Armani clothes and I can go do what I want. Nobody can tell me any different. I'm just living a how you doing life, you know? But in reality, he is lulling you to get to be with him in hell. I want to go to the scripture of Revelation 3 verses 19 through 22. Our friend and, and uh, fellow pastor, um, Reverend James Swanson, preached Let Him In a few weeks ago. And if you haven't seen that video, it's a, it's a wonderful video to live and to learn. Christ is trying to get all of our attentions, those who are his, that are mediocre, who don't really care, this, this phoning in your, your fellowship, phoning in your worship, phoning in your prayer life, phoning in your study, you're just doing this, just getting by. Nobody's going to notice. Who's going to care? Jesus ain't going to say nothing. Really? People are dying. People that you may not know are dying. You got to care because Christ cares. But look what it says in Revelations chapter 3, verses uh, 
20 through 22. It says here, behold, pay attention, pay attention, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, that's you, if anyone hears, intervention for listening, if anyone hears and hears with your heart, hears my voice, he's calling you, hears my voice and opens the door. That's what I'm, I'm fussing and yelling and, and praying and begging you. Open the door. I don't want to see anybody in hell. God didn't make it for you. He made it for the demons. But there are people that are in there that they didn't want to hear. But he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me. It says, sit with me on my throne as I have overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And the last scripture, I know I've given you a lot of scriptures. I'm not a preacher. I'm one of those unlearned that's been with Christ. I, I admit it. I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm just saying, I love the Lord. And I love you. I want you to hear what he said. He's knocking. Open the door and let him in. And I leave you with this scripture from Psalms 2 and 12 because I want you to hear that God wants you to be saved. God wants you to have a relationship with his son. He wants you to know the lordship of the most high God's son, Jesus Christ. But he recognizes that everyone will not accept the free gift of eternal salvation, that they would rather do their own thing and hope that God is going to be some gracious God and let you in because you're just so sweet that grandma just prayed for you so much and that's just going to get you in. But I want you to see Psalms 2 and 12 says, kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. I pray God that you have heard something because God is merciful. God is kind. God is loving. He's long suffering, but there will be a time where the breath that is in your body will come to an end and you will have to give an account. Did you accept his son? Did you kiss the son or did you reject the son? And those that reject the son, he says, Kiss the son lest he be angry. And he's going to be angry. And those that are not in the Lamb's book of life will be going to hell. Will be going to the lake of fire. And it will not end. And that is not something that God wants. He wants you to be in his family in relationship with his son. I repeat the scripture that we all have heard before. For God loved the world. That he gave. His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I love you. I thank God for you. I am praying that the Holy Spirit is going to touch somebody to be saved and to know that you are not forgotten. You are not alone. That you are a, a child that the Lord loves so much to give his only son for. So you don't have to spend your time wondering, nobody loves me. Yes, you are loved. Don't give up on your life. Turn your life over to Christ. Let Christ fill that void that you've been searching and trying to fill with cigarettes and dancing and smoking and men and women and partying and things. You can only fill it with the love of Jesus Christ. I love you and God bless you. I hope to see you next week, Lord willing.